Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today. It's time for another Japanese wrestling figure review, and today we've got a very excellent two-pack. It's another version of one of my favorite wrestlers of all time in Japan, and best of all, it's got a pair of championship belts along with it. Today we're looking at the Kenta Kobashi and Timon Honda two-pack based on their appearance in Pro Wrestling Noah. So let's talk about the packaging and the history behind this figure real quick before we take them out of the box and review them loose. The packaging is very simple. You know, all these Pro figures tend to be either just the normal vertical, or in the case of two packs, they're just a little bit wider. Nothing really that different or fancy about them. This particular packaging here has a picture of Timon Honda on the left and Kenta Kobashi on the right, and they have their GHC Tag Team Championships around their waists. Now, it's actually a little bit hard to see here, but Kobashi is also holding his GHC Heavyweight Championship across his shoulder, because at the same time he was the Tag Team Champion, he was also the Heavyweight Champion. And you can see that on the very top between both of these guys, it says they are the six GHC Tag Team Champions, and it's got the Pro Wrestling Noah logo right above that. And you guys can also see on the bottom here, there is a Mogura House logo right between them. So that's officially who made this. This is a Mogura House figure. But what's the difference between the Kara Pro figures and the Mogura House? Well, I have no idea. There's a lot of history behind that, but I'm still trying to unpack and figure out. If any of you guys have any ideas behind it, let me know in the comments below. As for the back of the packaging here, we've got a very, very big bio about both these men. I'm always impressed by how big these bios are in these figures in particular. And I gotta say, these are real wordy, lengthy bios about each guy. I mean, they really took advantage of the space they had here. I mean, can you imagine if Mattel put bios as big about their wrestlers as they were doing here in these Noah packs? It's insane to think about that, but that's how it was, and I'm fine with that. See, we're seeing their statistics in addition to the bio, and it looks like they have their theme music as well, because you can see here it lists Blazin, and over here it's got no survivors, which I'm pretty sure is meant to be survivors, but, mm, you know, something's get lost in translation. Now, is this an official Kara Pro figure? Well, that's where the debate comes in. It doesn't actually have the Kara Pro logo, the Kara Pro logo. All it has is a Noah logo, and I think Noah figures were made by Magura House. I still have a hard time actually differentiating who was what in terms of the companies and how to remember if they look any different because they all basically look identical. But yeah, there's no markings on here that says it is officially a character product figure. So this is probably one of the offshoots that Noah did. Although again, the history of Kara Pro and what happened to their company and who bought them, this and that, that's also a whole other thing to learn about. But really, that's going to be a video for a holiday day, because even I'm still confused by all that stuff. So we've already talked about Kenta Kobashi in our very first debut video in this Kara Pro series. And if you want to learn more about Kobashi and his figure, go ahead and check out that video. It's got a pretty good condensed history of who Kobashi is and who he was in that outfit that he was wearing. But who the heck is Timon Honda? Well, Honda is the master of the dead end, a high angle German suplex, and the Rolling Olympic Hell series, one of the best underrated finishers in pro wrestling. More so because there's in fact 10 individually numbered versions or variants of that move, all of which lead to quite a lot of pain, primarily caused by an arm triangle choke. It's such a great looking move and I love how it combos up, and I really can't believe it's not more popular or being used by someone else these days, in one of the bigger mainstream companies in America. But outside of pro wrestling, Timon Honda is an accomplished freestyle wrestler who represented Japan in many big events, including the 1984 Summer Olympics where he placed 5th in the 100kg division, and again in the 1988 Olympics, where he didn't actually place. He competed once again in the 1992 Summer Olympics, this time in the 130 kilogram division, where he placed 11th. And just think that if he had actually gone one more Olympic game and slimmed back down to 100 kilograms, he could have actually met Kurt Angle, potentially. And that would have been quite a fun thing to see. After the Olympics, Honda joined All Japan Pro Wrestling, winning the tag team titles twice, once with Jun Izumita, and later with Masao Inoue. But he really didn't do much there, he didn't really cause a big stir. He joined Noah not long after the big exodus happened, and started to have much more success there, which led to this figure. Now, as you guys can see here, obviously this is with Kenta Kobashi as the GHC Tag Team Champions. The GHC Tag Team Championships were won by Scorpio Invader on October 19th, 2001. And FYI, they do have an action figure 2 pack as well. Hopefully one of these days we'll get that too, but that's one of the more expensive ones. Vader and Scorpio defeated Jun Akiyama and Akitoshi Saito in the inaugural tournament finals. The belt changed hands three times before Akiyama and Saito finally won the belts in September 2002, which they held onto for an impressive 256 days, a number that still puts them in the top 10 longest GHC Tag Team Championship title reigns. It was in fact Kenta Kobashi and Timon Honda here who ended that title reign on June 6, 2003 with Honda, in fact, being the person to pick up the victory for his team. At this point, Kobashi, as we mentioned, was also holder of the GHC Heavyweight Championship, making him a dual champion, and I'm pretty sure the first dual champion in NOAA. When Honda won that belt, you can actually see him visibly emotional about it, because it's a pretty big deal for him, and it was kind of like the, the next level he needed to take for his career. And it should be added here that in March of that same year, Honda actually challenged Kobashi for his GHC Heavyweight title, which was Kobashi's first title defense of it. 
but it was ultimately a losing effort but it's a pretty great match to watch. And it kind of shows the importance of the underdog character that is Timon Honda, because he wasn't again seen as a popular wrestler, but he put up a heck of a fight for Kobashi and gave him a run for his money. So these two wrestlers defended their belts twice, first against Shinya Makabe and Yoshihiro Takayama in July, and then Akira Taui and Daisuke Ikeda in October. But in November, Yuji Nagata and a young Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated them for the belts, becoming the next tag team champions. But that wasn't the end for Timon Honda and Kenta Kobashi. However, that loss would not be the end for Kobashi and Honda, because three years later, they would once again win the tag belts by defeating Mohamed Yone and Takeshi Morishima in June 2006. However, the duo would not defend their titles even once before vacating the belts due to Kobashi requiring time off to deal with his kidney cancer. Honda sadly had to return the belts in September, and they vacated their claim as champions. So these two guys have got quite a history together, and it makes sense that they'd have a figure pack together as well to commemorate this really big moment. And it's a really nice looking two pack, but I think that's enough about these guys in the package. Let's go ahead and take them out and look at them loose. And you guys, I gotta tell you, this again really hurts me to open up this two pack, because this is a really excellent looking two pack here. Uh, for the most part, I mean, even this little dent here, I think, yeah, we can actually kind of squeeze it back into place. So that's actually why I'm not keeping it though in perfect package, because it does have this little bit of a dent here. And it's also not one of the more expensive versions of Kawashi to get. So if I ever wanted it again, I'm pretty sure I could find it. Ah, and so this is what's cool here. And so before I go much further, I just wanted to show you guys what's taped on the back of them here, because I forgot to mention that earlier. They have stands. I think these are actually the first car pro style figures we looked at that had stands. But we'll take a closer look at those once everything is loose. All right, and here's our Kobashi and Honda now out of the packaging. And it's, you might notice something if you look closely at Timon Honda's feet here. I had to put some blue tack on both of his feet, in fact, and also Kobashi's, because neither of these figures want to stand up straight. So that might explain why they come with those stands. We'll get to those in a moment, though. First things first, so let's talk about the figures, and I gotta start, of course, as always, with the head sculpts. So when I did that Kenta Kobashi figure review way back in the debut of this series, I talked about how it wasn't really my favorite likeness of Kobashi, and how I, I prefer this style in particular a little bit better. And there, in fact, is a difference between the two figures. So we've already seen Kobashi. I'm going to get to him in a second. But I want to talk about Timon Honda first, because this is his one and only figure ever. And I have to admit, it's actually very nicely done. I think this looks actually really good. And uh, to be completely honest, I think they actually did him some favors here. Because when you think about pro wrestlers, you don't really think about a guy like Timon Honda in his particular body shape. He's got this long ponytail on his back. He's got this raggly little looking goatee beard and thin little mustache. And he just looks kind of small and, and just, you know, physically not very intimidating in any way. He's certainly not a physical specimen, that's for damn sure. But this particular figure here, it actually makes him look a lot more menacing. He looks a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. So in terms of accuracy, you know, it might not be as accurate necessarily, but I think it actually does him a lot of favors and helps him out. It just makes him look a better toy. Now as for Kobashi, you know, I mentioned in the Kobashi review we did in the very first video in this series how I wasn't really a super big fan of that particular head sculpt. I didn't think it was that good. And I said that there was Kobashis that I thought were better. Well, this is one of those Kobashis that I think is better. And I'm going to bring in that Kobashi that we reviewed in that first video just to show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison to them. So what are the biggest differences between these figures? Well, sculpt-wise, they made some improvements on him. Now, this figure came out about two years or so after that first Kobashi came out. So there's definitely been some clear improvements about paint and sculpting. But clearly, you guys can see right away in the faces, there are major discrepancies between the two of them. And I think that this Kobashi here from the two-pack, it looks a lot better. Now, the skin color might be a little mm, purpley, in fact, to be honest. That part is not as great, I guess, but I don't hate how it looks either. What's definitely way more improved, though, is the hair and the face in particular. And you can see that the nose on this Kobashi is a little bit thinner than the other one. The eyes were painted a little bit better. The eyebrows are painted nicer. The mouth especially looks, I think, way more like Kobashi. So this is a much better figure and I think a better version of the character. The hairs are also pretty different as well. I feel like this version here we got from the two-pack is just a little bit more realistic looking for this style of figures. And I also want to note, just as a point of reference for the timeline when these figures came out, you can see that this Kobashi from the two-pack has both of his giant knee pads, whereas this one only has the one taped up knee. In the course of just a few years, his knees got really, really shot badly. His knees got worse and worse to the point where I had to wear those giant knee pads. And that's actually why I call the tag team of Timon Honda and Kenta Kobashi here the knee pad bros, because they both had enormous pads. But yeah, from every angle, this Kobashi, I think, is superior to the version we got from his first voyage match. And I think this style is the version of Kobashi to get if you can find him, but it's actually a little bit harder to find, not surprisingly. 
Now, I already talked a little bit about Honda's body here being a little bit thicker than I think how his actual body is, but I think it looks great. I think it still looks a good looking body. Now, Kavashi is a little more interesting because he's wearing his entrance gear here. Now, I'm gonna actually pick these guys up for a second and take some of that blue tack off of them because I wanna try out the stands right now. And let me show you what the, these stands look like here. So it's got the Pro Wrestling Noah logo on the front of it. And each one of them has a nameplate, like, you know, who the dudes are. So you can see they also have these little pegs or kind of peg holes all around the base in different positions here. And that's so that you could fit different wrestlers in them, but they all come packaged essentially the same way with the faceplate over here, with the nameplate in the front, and these legs here, because most of the time their legs were kind of in that position. So in theory, this should keep him up pretty firmly. And yeah, okay, that's pretty great. He's holding him up. He does still look a little bit unbalanced, but luckily because of how these are positioned, it's holding him in place. Let's do the same with Kobashi. So that's one of the things I like about these later figures as well is the fact that they came with these stands because they need them. And I think they just look good with the stands as well. So in terms of articulation of these guys, these are Kara Pro figures. So that means they have like next to none. So Timon Honda, you know, his arms can go up and down. So can Kobashi's. It looks like, yeah, the waist moves and that's that. Now Kobashi, I'm a little more curious about because, well, he looks like he's out a little bit less. You know, you guys can see the arms move fairly nicely, but does his waist move? That's what I'd like to find out. And I think the answer is gonna be a no. Or if it does move, it's not gonna do much because it's very, very hindered. And that kind of leads me to the accessory discussion because you can see here that, you can see here that Timon Honda comes with his GHC Tag Team Championship belt, as does Kobashi. The difference between these two is that Honda's belt comes off and Kobashi's is actually molded onto his body, from what I can tell. Like, it looks like this does not come off. And if you kind of look at the joint as well, it seems like that actually is part of his joint. Like this is the sculpt itself. It's just permanently sculpted with that belt around his waist. And that's kind of one of the downsides, I guess, of this particular version of Kobashi is that if you get this style of him, that belt's permanently on him. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That depends. I actually like it around his waist, but when I first got my Kobashi, like, I was just kind of sad I couldn't take any of the belts off and put it on my other wrestling toys. But luckily this two pack does give us the option to do that because it does come off and you can see it does have this nice simple strap system. We've tried it out in other videos and it's generally been fine. It's generally stayed on, but we've had some occasions where it didn't like this Pancrase belt that you guys will see in a different video. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it actually right now just to see if it does come back on and off as easily as I'd like it to. And it'll also give us a better look at Timon's body there. But yeah, I'm, I've always loved the GHC championship belts. I think they're some of the nicest looking belts as well. And let's go ahead, let's try and put this back on, see if it does the job. And yeah, okay, it's basically back on. So the belt wasn't really even entirely on him to begin with. That's also partly because Timon Honda here is such a bigger, broader character, but it's back on his waist, that's what matters. And I think this belt strap might even be a little bit bigger than the normal figure. It looks great, that's kind of what matters. And most importantly, neither of these belts suffer from the green disease. We've talked about that in the past, other toys and other championship belts. It's not unusual to see these Car Pro toys have the green disease, which means the gold in their belts will kind of start turning to yellow a little bit. We'll kind of start turning to green, and it's something you can't really reverse the process of either. In fact, just for reference, here's our Antonio Inoki with the NWF championship belt. So you can see just another good example of a good looking belt. I don't have any green diseased figures, luckily, and I hope they never turn that way. So let's talk about variants now with these Mogura House figures. And I hate to tell you guys, but there are no other versions of Timon Honda. For this style of figure, there's nothing else besides what you're seeing here. And luckily it does come with a championship belt, so that makes it pretty great. There's a Timon Honda mini big head figure, but outside of the trading cards and some magazine posters, I think this pretty much represents the end of Timon Honda merchandise. Now, as for Kenta Kobashi, of course, you guys already know there are many, many versions of him out there. But this is now the GHC Championship version of him, and there were several different variations of this particular figure. The version, in fact, that I have of Kobashi, which is, I think, probably my first or my very first Car Pro figures, has Kobashi with both, of, with both of his belts on him. And there's a version of that as well in the sepia and monotone style, which is very, very cool and very, very, very rare. And I believe there's, there might also be a version out there of Kobashi without any belts around his waist, but wearing the entrance robe. And interestingly enough, this two-pack, in fact, has its own variant with a different Kobashi. And that Kobashi has the hood up on his robe. And that's a pretty cool looking figure. So if you can find that version with the hood on his head, I think that's pretty great too. Which one's better? I don't really know. I haven't actually seen that one up close enough to judge, but I would imagine that the head sculpt is completely the same. They just put the hood around his head to differentiate it a little bit. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, the head sculpt is still the same in all the figures. It's really just the arms and the number of championship belts that differs between those figures. So for my money, this is actually a very strong two pack to get. And if you've been on the fence about getting any car pro guys, I think this is a very, very good starting point because it's, it's a two pack that gives you, gives you one removable championship belt. It gives you another excellent version of Kenta Kobashi. It gives you the two bases, which are always handy to have. And it's also usually one of the more affordable two packs out there. 
Now, affordability and car pro are not words that go together that often, but there's two packs that are gonna cost you a ton of money, like versions that have Jushin Liger in them or other super duper popular wrestlers. But because this has Timon Honda in it, I, I hate to say he kind of, I guess, brings down the value a little bit because <laughs> he's not as popular as the other guys out there. But it's a great version of Kobashi that you can just see stands out really well on its own. And I think the Timon Honda figure is also a very underrated figure, as much as he wasn't a very underrated wrestler when he was competing. I mean, this version of Kobashi, I'm never gonna bad mouth. And I basically bought it just to get that Kobashi. But the fact that it comes with a bonus Timon Honda, I mean, that's pretty priceless too. So I definitely give this two pack a recommendation, totally worth your money. And I definitely recommend you guys check out both of their victories when they won their respective tag team championships in 2003 and 2006. And it's also worth watching Honda take on Kobashi for that very first GHC title defense he had in 2003. I think you'll see why I like Timon Honda so much. And it's a real shame that he never came to America or got to wrestle guys like Brock Lesnar or Kurt Angle when they came to Japan. So that's our review of the six GHC Tag Team Championship two pack of Kenta Kobashi and Tomo and Honda. I hope you guys found this video informative and entertaining. If you guys like this video and want to see more about car pro wrestling figures, WWF figures from Mattel, New Japan figures from Super 7, and Wicked Cool Toys AEW figures, as well as everything else we do here on the channel, please make sure to subscribe to us. And hey, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today, and keep that fighting spirit burning.